Hello, it's Emma Mills here and welcome to episode 116 of my TV. I am back this week with, I think, a tip that is going to be one of the most well-received and well-used tips out of every single episode and that is saying something. Now, a couple of weeks ago I did something that I should have done a very long time ago and that was ask the people that watch my videos what would they actually like me to record a video about? Or what um, problems do they need help solving? What kind of things take their time up in business? Because obviously these videos are all about getting your time back so you can focus on the fun in your business and you can focus on the things you like and enjoy doing best. So one of the first emails to come back, and to be fair, he has asked me this before, and this is long overdue, Michael, um, he asked me about help with his emails. Now, he his concepts and his thoughts about his email inbox is definitely very much, I would think, the same as most other business owners, entrepreneurs, to be honest, people with busy jobs, busy lives who have an email inbox. I think email, actually, in hindsight, is one of the worst things that's ever been created. It can tie people to their desks. It is a chief procrastinator. It is something that makes people feel busy, but they're actually not achieving a lot. And we've become really tied to them. Like, I know, uh, I know people who will get emails and the phone will buzz at night, and it's an immediate response. I mean, we all know that we're kind of tied 24-7 a lot of the time to our devices. But email inbox, I think, is one of the main culprits for... People just sat with their laptop or computer open, responding as they come in. And it is the worst fritterer of time, if that is a word, um, I think, that exists in business life nowadays. So uh, Michael asked me, what are the top tips? Like, could he outsource his inbox? What are the top tips for getting a hold on it, on dealing with it? I think people expect immediate responses. Um, obviously, once emails come in, I know loads of people, and I've been guilty of it, you just kind of deal with the top ones that come in, and as more come in, the ones below don't get seen to for ages. So today, I filtered down, and I could make a very long TV about dealing with email, but I filtered down my top three tips on how best to deal with your inbox. Doesn't matter what kind of inbox you have, whether it's Gmail, 365, these just three three principles will apply to all of them, even if you have those nasty webmail ones, which are like POP3 and IMAP inboxes, whatever, and even if they still exist. But So my top three tips for some quick wins. Number one is to have an automated email reply on your inbox. Now, I have one, and mine goes along the lines of, Hi, it's Emma Mills here. Um, if you've seen my latest My TV, then you should know that I need to follow my own advice and to get my head out of the dirt and into the clouds, I can't be responding to email all day. And basically this email just has a few more lines to say that my PA, Rebecca, will be monitoring my inbox. I will look at it at least once a day to respond to emails. And if there's anything really urgent, she'll grab it to my attention, but I'm only looking at my inbox once a day. And to be fair, I think in most cases that's fair. Anybody who's tied to it, you're just not productive and you're not doing your best work anyway. So an automated email, email response even, which gives some, um, what's the words, gives some guidelines, gives some expectation of when you're going to reply to them. That if you're only going to look at it once a day and they've emailed you at four o'clock in the afternoon, the likelihood of an email that day or first thing in the morning, not going to happen. So I think having an automated response is a really smart thing to do. It does, and my email response does also say that if you need something really urgently, ring the office, speak to Rebecca or Matt, and they'll be able to help you and get you the help you need. Tip number one. Tip number, tip number two even, do not have loads and loads of folders that you end up filing into. One, you never stick with it, they don't work, you never find anything in them anyway. I think everybody would be far better served just having one folder that says dealt with and you move everything into it as you do deal with it because having, like I've been guilty of it also and all of this that comes from the voice of experience, but having all those folders that are like um, accounts, accounts dealt with, um, a folder for every single customer, um, new inquiry, you know you know what I mean, and I'm sure some of you out there will have them as well. I just do not see the point anymore. One folder, dealt with, done, and the best way to find an email going forward is just to search for it in the bar. You know, most email hosting inboxes are really well served now just to do a search. Do not bog yourself down with folders. It will also make the outsourcing of your inbox really, really hard because having 53 rules about 
how every single email gets filed is going to be super time consuming, never going to quite work. Um, it just becomes hard work. So just have one folder, make life simple for yourself. Just move it in there and done. When you outsource an inbox, it's really smart to have um, some, a, a folder that you uh, where your emails that get moved into only things you can deal with then maybe a PA dealing with PA dealt with and maybe like a marketing folder where those kind of things you like to read at the weekend or later at night if you signed up to mailing lists that kind of thing maybe three or four folders like that but overall just have one dealt with and just move them all into there and if you don't need delete and my third and final tip is to get a new email address now by this, as an example, what I mean is, so since forever I have worked from emma.mills at mi-pa.co.uk. Now, if I was starting from scratch in terms of getting a member of my team or a virtual PA to work with it, a really smart thing to do would be to get um, an emma at email address or an emma.m or anything, something that's a slight variation on what you already have and start to use the new inbox for only emails that you need to deal with. So what, this solves two things basically. One, this new inbox only has the important stuff in it, all those things that you have um, subscribed to and all of the marketing emails that come in, everything over the course of those years you've had your business and you know your inbox get clo gets clogged up. This new version 2.0 inbox is only everything you need to deal with um, and it'll get some clarity for you. But the second point, sorry, I nearly forgot, is it gives you com um, confidentiality as well. If you're going to outsource your inbox and maybe there are just some things you don't want to see, getting version 2.0 that only you see means that you can still have those emails that are conversations to, I don't know, uh, other members of your team, um, whether it's family, friends, wh whatever it is you don't want people to see and outsource, you can keep it in version 2.0, you see. So... And it can be a slow migration in that all the emails that come into Emma.mills, I give to my virtual PA, she starts working on them. And the only things that I can deal with, she will forward to the new inbox. And from that moment on, I only reply from the new inbox. And people will get used to the, the new email address and it will, it will basically start to filter out anything you only want to keep in this inbox that are for your eyes only. So I hope these three tips, which are automated email response, don't have a bazillion folders. And number three, get a second email address that you can do what you like with. Hope these three tips get your head out of the dirt and into the cloud. And I will see you next week for episode 117. See you then. Bye-bye.